And now, we'll drag the picture up and use the column guides to snap it to wherever we want. Resize an image proportionally by holding down the shift key and dragging on a corner box diagonally. We want the image to cover two columns in the article, so once we see it snap to the guides at two columns, we're going to let go. Now we can only see part of the image, but we can fix that by having the image selected and clicking on the box up here that says Fit Content Proportionally. You're going to learn to love that option. That's better, but I lost the cropping I did earlier, so I'll redo that. And remember that it's usually better to have my images 100% ready before I save them in Photoshop. So I'd want to do my cropping in Photoshop if possible. Let's add a text wrap around this image so the text will flow around it. With the image selected, click on our favorite text wrap button here. Let's select the type tool and create a two column box under the picture. Click back on the Move tool, make sure the new box is selected, and change its height value to 0.412. Double click in the new box with the Move tool, change the font size to 9 point, and right align it. Give credit to the source of your photo. Press Enter. Change the text to left aligned italic, and type a caption for the image. Let's click on the line tool and draw a two point line underneath the photo caption to separate it from the rest of the story. With the move tool we'll click and drag across our caption and line to select them both. Hold down the shift key and click on the large box to deselect that because we don't want to work on that. Let's click on that text wrap button so that when our text makes it over to that column it'll wrap around the caption and the line. While I still have them selected, I'm going to move them down just a little with the arrow keys on my keyboard to give them some space. Now we'll hold control and press zero to see what our whole page looks like so far. Let's add another image. We'll go to file, place, and find another grayscale picture for our article. Double click on it and drop it on the page. We'll go through basically the same process for this image. Scale it by clicking and dragging from the corner while holding the shift key to keep it proportional. Click on the fit content proportionally button. Press the Z key on your keyboard to get the zoom tool. And click on it to zoom in. Now we can copy our previous caption and line. Use the Move tool to drag it over under our new picture, and then change the text. Click on the caption, hold Shift, then click on the image to select them both, and click the Text Wrap button, and watch the text flow around everything. Hold Control and press 0 to see what our whole page looks like again. You can see that there's some space at the bottom. We can just chop off a little of the bottom of our article box by dragging up from the bottom center. We can make even more room by using the move tool to click and drag over the lower image in its caption. Hold shift and click on the article text box to deselect it. Then drag the image in its caption up and resize the text box from the bottom again. You can fiddle with these positions all day, but when you just need to adjust the text to fit into its allotted space, you can quickly just select all the text in the box by clicking on the box four times in a row real fast. If you need to make it fit, making small adjustments to the font size or the spacing box below it will usually do the trick. Just make sure you don't lose any of your article. If you wish to add shading to the background of one of your text boxes, simply have the box selected and click here where it says color and type in a percent or click somewhere on this bar. 
If you click on this tiny drop down arrow on the bottom tool in the toolbar, you're going to get some options on how your page will appear in InDesign. We're practically done with this page, so we want to preview it to see how it's going to look outside of InDesign. So I'll click Preview from these options. If I want this text wrap palette or any other one out of my way, I can simply drag it into the others and it's going to collapse just like the other palettes. And I can bring it back out anytime I want just by clicking on the icon or just dragging the whole thing out again. This page looks ready to go. So let's go to File, Save As. We'll save it as an InDesign document. This is the end of Lesson 4. In Lesson 5, I'll show you how to get your finished pages ready for printing.